Hello, this is Tony Heller from RealClimateScience.com. In this video, I'm going to go into some more detail about the corruption of the U.S. temperature record. The official U.S. temperature record from NASA used to show cooling from 1930 through the end of the 20th century. But that cooling didn't suit their political needs, so NASA and NOAA altered the data to turn this cooling trend into a warming trend over the same period. If you go to the National Oceanic and Atmospheric Administration website and plot out their graph of U.S. summer afternoon temperatures, you'll see warming since 1895. But a different website from the same agency shows that hot summer afternoons used to be much more common in the United States. This is a rather serious contradiction. You can't get an increase in average summer afternoon temperatures at the same time there is a sharp decrease in the frequency of hot days. There's been a decrease in the percent of summer days above 80 degrees Fahrenheit. There's been a decrease in days above 85 degrees Fahrenheit, above 90 degrees Fahrenheit, above 95 degrees Fahrenheit, and above 100 degrees Fahrenheit. In the past, the frequency of hot summer afternoons in the United States was higher, and the frequency of cool summer afternoons was lower. So the average maximum temperature has to be decreasing. And that's exactly what we see in this top line. The measured average summer maximum temperature has been declining in the United States. But the purple line is what the National Climatic Data Center is reporting. They're showing an increase in average summer maximum temperatures. This is mathematically impossible given all the other trends. The reason we're seeing that impossible trend is because the National Oceanic and Atmospheric Administration is altering the data. This is what the actual thermometer data looks like. But NOAA alters the data and turns this cooling trend into a warming trend. They started doing this about 25 years ago through a set of small adjustments, total of about 0.5 degrees Fahrenheit, which went flat after the year 1990. But now the adjustments are much larger than they were in the 2005 version. And instead of going flat after the year 1990, now they accelerate after the year 1990. The relatively modest adjustments from 20 years ago are now about four times larger. It's very easy to show mathematically that these adjustments are fraudulent. This graph plots the percent of summer days above 90 degrees Fahrenheit on the x-axis. And on the y-axis is plotted the average maximum temperature as actually recorded from the thermometers. As one would expect, there's a very strong correlation between average maximum temperature and the frequency of hot days. The average maximum temperature increases about 2 degrees Fahrenheit for every 10% increase in the number of 90 degree days. And the R squared correlation is very high. It's 0 0.9056 out of a maximum of 1. This means that you can fairly accurately predict the average maximum temperature during the summer just by knowing the percent of days above 90 degrees Fahrenheit. But if we take this same graph and plot the adjusted temperatures instead of the measured ones on the y-axis, we see something very different. We get a large scatter and the correlation breaks down to a poor 0.56. The correlation is poor for the adjusted data, but quite good for the measured data. This tells us that the adjustments are no good. They are wrecking the U.S. temperature data set. There are two steps in the adjustment process. The first is the time of observation bias adjustment, and the second is the final adjustment where we get this huge hockey stick. First, we're going to look at the small time of observation bias adjustment, which hasn't changed much over the last 20 years. This adjustment is based on an idea that in the past, many observers reset their min-max thermometers during the afternoon, which tended to cause double counting of hot days. But rather than tampering with the data in order to make an attempt to compensate for it, there's a better way to handle the problem. This is the set of all 1,218 U.S. Historical Climatology Network stations, which is by far the best and most extensive data set in the world. Rather than trying to adjust stations which reset their thermometer in the afternoon, it's better to just eliminate them. 
This map shows all the stations which reset their thermometer in the morning during July 1936, which was the hottest month on record in the United States. This group of stations will not suffer from double counting of hot afternoons, rather will suffer from double counting of cold mornings. The problem for climate alarmists is that using this set of stations, nothing much changes with the U.S. temperature record. This graph shows the summer average maximum temperature for all of those stations which reset their thermometers in the morning. As you can see, it's scarcely different than the set of all stations. Next, we're going to look at a graph of the percent of days above 90 degrees Fahrenheit at that same set of stations. As you can see, the two graphs are nearly identical. And once again, the correlation between average maximum temperature and the percent of 90 degree days is very good for that set of stations. So nothing much really changed by eliminating the afternoon stations. And once again, we can see that the graph of measured data versus the adjusted data shows the same patterns. The adjustments are fraudulent. They don't have any basis in science. The correlation between adjusted temperatures and the percent of days above 90 degrees Fahrenheit for that set of morning stations is very poor. The adjustments don't work. This is the adjustment graph for that set of morning stations. As you can see, the time of observation bias adjustment is very small, as you would expect. Now let's do that same experiment for July 1936 afternoon stations, which according to their theory, should produce a very large skewing of the data. But using only the afternoon stations makes almost no difference. The average summer maximum temperature graph once again looks almost identical, and the graph of the frequency of hot days does as well. Once again, the correlation between the average maximum temperature and the percent of days above 90 degrees Fahrenheit for the afternoon stations is quite high. And the adjustments, once again, are nearly identical. The measured data shows a strong cooling trend, while the adjusted data shows a strong warming trend. And the correlation breaks down rather badly after the adjustments are made. Once again, we can see that the NOAA adjustments are corrupting the data. This graph is the real smoking gun of fraud. It shows atmospheric CO2 along the x-axis and the magnitude of the adjustments along the y-axis. There's almost perfect correlation, which means they're adjusting the data to match their CO2 theory. I've been pointing this out for a long time, and 10 years ago, Snopes fact-checked me. They said that my claims were false. Since 2014, climate change deniers have squeezed millions of views, Facebook shares, and Twitter retweets by retelling a story alleging the discovery of fake NASA data. But then they immediately acknowledged that what I was saying was true. The data was being altered, just as I said it was. They said they talked to the people who were doing the data tampering, and those people told them that they were adjusting the data for good reason. And Snopes said there was nothing secret about the data tampering which was being done. They said it was being done right out in the open. But if we go to the NOAA website, they don't tell you that the data has been altered. They don't tell you that the thermometer data shows a cooling trend. Journalists, academics, policymakers, and members of the public who come to this website will of course believe that this is thermometer data. There's no transparency with their data tampering. This is what their graph should look like and this is what it does look like. Snopes, of course, never made any attempt to contact me. They simply took the perpetrator's explanation at face value and ran with it. Snopes is not doing any actual fact-checking. All they're doing is spreading propaganda for the government. But this fraud is much larger than I've been indicating. It goes global. They tell us that they have to massively tamper with the very high quality U.S. temperature data to turn cooling into warming. They tell us that they have to make more than two degrees of adjustments based on what they know about the station's history. But at the same time, NOAA admits that they don't know very much about the stations being used outside of the United States. In their documentation, they say, although reasonably good records of instrument type and observing practices are maintained for stations in the U.S., the types of instrumentation and observing practices are most often unknown for stations outside the U.S. They don't know what time of day the thermometers were reset. They don't know anything about the collection of data at most of the thermometers outside of the United States. 
And this is information which they tell us they need to have in order to adjust the temperature record. And even worse than that is the problem that they have very little historical temperature data for most of the world. They have extremely good data from the United States, but from South America they have almost none. There's almost no temperature data from 1895 from Africa, the Middle East, most of Asia, and much of Australia. And yet, despite no data over most of the surface of the planet, and no knowledge of how the data was collected at the stations which they actually do have data for, five different supposedly independent groups are able to agree on temperatures from 1895 within a few hundredths of a degree. And these are the same people who say they have to tamper with the very high quality U.S. temperature record by more than two degrees to come up with a correct reading. They say they have to turn a cooling trend into a warming trend. The same requirements and excuses they're using for tampering with the U.S. temperature record are not even possible with the global temperature record. Yet they blindly accept their fake global temperature record as being real. And then they get fact checkers to back them up in this fraud, which makes Piltdown Man look like child's play. Toto has been pulling back the curtain on the climate scam for almost 16 years. You can visit him and his family on the web at realclimatescience.com.